You know, I've been hearing about Coconut Grove for a long time. You guys have been around a while, I don't know if you realize it. But I mean, when I was back at Northside years ago, I heard about Coconut Grove. So you've been around, you're not a new kid on the block. That's right. You've been around here for a little while. So um, you know the ropes, and um, you know how to praise the Lord, I'm sure. Yes, God's God's praise God. So I don't mind you praising the Lord. As a matter of fact, if you don't praise him this morning, I might get a little nervous. <laughs> and and I, I might slow down quite a bit if you don't praise him. But as long as you're praising him, as long as I hear those amens coming, I'm going to get through and we can go out and have our lunch. Amen. Amen. I, 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 I'm glad to see at least a couple of familiar faces. Amen. Okay. My dear choir member over here, yes. uh, uh, she Richard? was a, 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 a faithful choir member, as I recall, Amen. back at Northside. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, um, Sister Evelyn over here. Yes. We used to call her Breaker Breaker back in the day. And she told me she's still doing that Breaker Breaker thing. But uh, uh, yes, we, 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 we love you and, and, and all of you, I just want to say I love you and it's good to be here at the Coconut Grove Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. God, God continue to bless you. Okay. Um, I'd like to get right into the word of God this morning. <clears throat> and I call your attention to uh, the above, to the uh, scripture that was read a little earlier. So glad to see that you are using your young people mm -hmm. on, on your program. It's good. I, I love to see that. I believe that we need to train our young people so that uh, they can take over when we have left the scene. So it's very, it warms my heart when I see those young people uh, doing things for the Lord. But I'd like to call your attention to that, to that formerly read scripture found in the book of Psalms uh, 91 verses 1 and 2. Psalms 91 verses 1 and 2, and it reads thusly, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. I, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge yes, is. and my fortress. In Him will I trust. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> We'd like to if we could use a subject for our message this morning, it would be joy in the secret place. All right. Amen. Joy, joy in the secret place. Okay. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we come before you thanking you for your loving kindness and your many tender mercies. Yes. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of yet another beautiful blessed sabbath day Amen. lord we ask that you would be with your people today allow your holy spirit to speak through me may the words that are spoken from this desk be not my words All right. but words that are sent directly from your throne of grace Amen. may our hearts be glorified and may we be message today yes. and we will give you the praise yes. the honor and the glory yes. that you deserve Amen. in Jesus holy name we pray Amen. 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 praise the Lord joy joy in the secret place you know in this fast moving technologically advanced internet driven world in which we live it seems that everyone is in a hurry oh, yeah. to go nowhere 
It seems that as though we have gotten to the place that if you are going on a trip, whether it's a short trip or a long trip, if you do not want to receive a lot of dirty looks, if you don't want to receive a lot of hunks, if you don't want to be the recipient of profanity or the proverbial middle finger, then you better buckle your seatbelts, put on your helmet, be prepared to move the instant the traffic light changes, and then go at least 10 miles per hour over the posted speed limit. It seems that these are the unwritten rules in today's fast-moving society. We live in a world where it seems that everybody wants to have their cake and eat it too. We want to wake up late and still expect to make it to work on time. Students want to wait until the night before the exam to go over their notes and still expect to get an A. Mm. We want to do just enough to get by on our jobs, but then when it's time for our yearly review, we expect a big fat raise. Mm. We want our children to grow up and be responsible, well-adjusted, and law-abiding adults, but instead of spending quality time with them, and talking to them about real life issues, we go out and spend money that we don't have and buy them an iPad or a, an iPhone. And we essentially say to them, I don't really have time to devote to you. So take this iPhone yeah. or iPad and make it your constant companion. Yes, and that's what they do. We want our families to be in good health. Yes. But instead of taking the time to prepare healthful and wholesome meals yes. for our families, we allow McDonald's, Come on now. Kentucky Fried Chicken, yes. Chick-fil-A, yes. Pollo Tropical yes. to feed them because we just don't yes. have yes. the time. Oh, mercy. This fast pace, we of life has also expected our spirituality. Yes. For we claim to be Christians, but instead of spending quality time with Jesus, he becomes just someone that we call on when things seem to get out of hand. All right, all right. To some, he is that person that they visit occasionally whenever there is a special need. To others, he is someone that they commune with one day a week on Sabbath. Although we often claim that he is first and foremost in our lives, in our fast-paced way of living, we find a little time in our busy schedules for Jesus. But you know, there is a special blessing, a special covering for those who take time to have a special relationship with God. The psalmist talks about this special covering in Psalms 91. Yeah. He says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High yeah. shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. Somebody may ask the question, uh, just where is this secret place? Yeah. Is there a particular place or, or building where I must go in order to abide? in the shadow of the Almighty. I want you to know today that the secret place is anywhere yes. that you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. It, it could be in your bedroom. It could be in your closet. It could be on your job. It could even be in that special place out in nature where you spend quality time one-on-one -on -one with God. But anywhere that you are abiding with him, anywhere that you are communing with him, 
thing to praise God when everybody can see you. Yes. It's one thing to, to wave your hands and jump up and shout when those in the congregation can bear witness to your actions. Yes. But when God is first in your life, when God has priority in your life, when you spend some time each and every day to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him, the psalmist said that you shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You see, there's significance in a shadow. A shadow provides protection from the searing ultraviolet rays of the sun. In the desert, a shadow could mean the difference between survival and an agonizing death. Notice that the shadow does not keep the sun from shining, but it provides protection in the midst of the sunlight. The shadow does not keep the trials away, but it provides protection as we go through those trials. But David does not stop there. He goes on to tell us what it means to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In verse 2 he says, when you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, he'll be your refuge and your fortress. And you can put all of your trust in him. You see, when he's your refuge and your fortress, when the storms of life begin to rage, uh, you can find peace in the midst of the storm. Those around you will look at you in amazement and wonder, how is it that you could be at, in such peace when you're going to so many, going through such severe trials? It's simply because you are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. In, in verse 3, he says, when you abide under the shadow of the, uh, of the Almighty, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. In other words, he'll rescue you from hidden traps and shield you from deadly hazards. Amen. You see, Satan sets traps each and every day for you to fall into. Yes, yes. But when you are covered by God's shadow, when others are falling into the devil's snares, yes. you simply walk around them and say, get thee behind me, Satan. Yes. When you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, you will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor makes me want to jump and shout. Verse 7 says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. People all around you could be losing their jobs. Their homes are going into foreclosure, and their marriages are breaking up. But because you are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, you are somehow shielded from all of these things. Amen. People are all around you are, are coming down with COVID-19 and all kinds of viruses and all kinds of diseases. But because you are abiding under the shadow of, of the Almighty, you are somehow shielded from many of these maladies. You see, it's a mighty good thing to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But, th but that's not all. It goes on to say, because you have made the Lord your habitation, no evil shall befall you, neither shall any plagues come nigh your dwelling. For he has given his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Now, I'll never forget a story that a preacher friend of mine told me. He was, he was out in, in, in Overtown area, you know, that, that, that's, that's a dangerous area, the Overtown area. And he said he was doing some, some witnessing over there. And, 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 and there, there were some young men over there that were, were up to no good. 
Okay. You know, and, and, and they saw him walking around there, uh, and, and I think they had bad I intentions. Mm -hmm. but, 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 but he kept on doing his witnessing, and he saw the young men. And, and, and it seems as though they were coming toward him. But, 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 but then something happened, and, and, and they, they, they went back, and, and they, did not, they did not do what they had intended to do. And, and, and later on, he said, uh, one, of the, one of the leaders of, of, of this little gang said, came to him and told him, said, you know, we, we, you know, we, we, we were going to take you out one night. But but because there were those men around you, Come on now. because there were those men around you, uh, we, we 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 decided to go back. You, you see, you see, those men. He said there was no one with him. But he said holy angels had surrounded him to shield him because he was abiding under the shadow. Under the shadow of the Almighty, God will protect your household. God will protect your home when there is danger lurking around the bend. The scripture says he will send down some angels to protect you and ward anyone, ward off anyone who seeks to do you harm. I tell you, I don't want to be messing with someone who is abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. It's a dangerous thing to try to harm anyone who is walking under the shadow of the Almighty. Be careful who you talk about. Be careful when you start spreading false rumors because that person could be abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Then it goes on to say, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the ass. The young lion and dragon shall tramp, shall thou trample under thou feet. You see, the lion, the adder, and the dragon represents those individuals or entities who seek to do you harm. But if you're abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, it says that anyone who attempts to cause you any harm will be trampled under your feet. When God's covering is over somebody, when God's protection is surrounding somebody, when God's blessing has been bestowed on somebody, you may plot and you may scheme, but you better watch out because you just might get trampled. Amen. But verses 14 and 15 really brings this thing home. It says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and what will I do? I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. God is saying, uh, when things were going well with you, uh, you were not too busy to spend time with me. Right. When you didn't have any problems and burdens were not pressing you down, I was your priority in your life. Right. When your breath, when your health was good and you had money in the bank, every day you gave me glory and honor. Amen. So because you spent time with me in good times, because you didn't put me on the back burner in good times, because Now that you're burdened, I'm going to be your burden bearer. Right. Now that you're in trouble, I'm going to be your bridge over troubled waters. Yeah. Now that there are storms in your life, I'm going to give you peace in the midst of the storm. Now that you're sick, I'm going to be your doctor in your sick room, your lawyer in your courtroom. Now that there's no money in the bank, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't even have. 
knows that you're covered. Yes. Such a good thing to know that you're blessed. Yes. It's so comforting to know that God is on your side. Right. It's so wonderful to know that the same God who healed the sick, same God who raised the dead, same God who gave sight to the blind, yes. same God who unstopped deaf ears, same God who cast out devils, same God who spoke to the wind and the wave and they obeyed his will. Amen. The same God who was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, the same God of those who abided under the shadow of the Almighty. I can think of old man Noah. Yeah. Now Noah was by, by no means a perfect man. And Noah did have some issues. But when Noah received the divine call from God to build an ark and warn sinful men and women to turn from their evil ways, Noah answered the call. All right, all right. Anyone who can preach a message that people don't want to hear for 120 years, anyone who can build an ark of the exact dimensions and use the exact material that God wanted him to use, anyone who can endure being criticized, ostracized, laughed at, and even called crazy for 120 years and yet hold fast to his calling had to be abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. You see, when you decide to abide under God's shadow, you're going to be talked about. You're going to be criticized. They may even say that you're strange because sometimes it, you go against the grain. But just remember that when you're abiding under the shadow of Almighty, uh, you're living in the spiritual realm. And spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Because of Noah's obedience, he along with his family members was saved. But everyone else perished in the flood. Amen. Then I can think of Job, the one who God proudly displayed before Satan when he says, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Uh, that there is none like him in all the earth. A perfect and upright man, one who feareth God and escheweth or avoids evil. Amen. In this sin filled earth in order for any man to be considered perfect and upright before God he had to be abiding under the shadow of the almighty you see God knows his true followers God knows the one who will not only serve him when the sun is shining but will also serve him when the storms of life are raging God knew that when Job was put to the test he would pass with flying colors because And when the test did come, after losing all his material possessions, yeah. mm -hmm. after the tragic loss of his children, after being stricken with a terrible case of ball, boils from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, after his friends all turned against him and even suggested that Job's malady had to be the result yeah. of some sin in his life. Yeah. And even after his very own wife yes. told him to curse God and die, because Job was abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, even in the midst of trials, Job was able to stand boldly yes. before the adversary and say with conviction, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And God restored Job twice over. He had twice as many sheep as he had before. Twice as many camels. Twice 
the number of yoke of oxen and twice as many she asses. Not only that, Job was blessed with seven more sons and three more daughters. You see, when you continue to abide under the shadow of the Almighty through fiery trials, God will restore what the devil tried to steal from you. As the song says, you will begin reaping the harvest God promised you. And eventually you're going to take back what the devil stole from you. Then there was one of my favorite in the Bible, the Apostle Paul. Birth name of Paul was actually Saul. Saul was born into a Jewish family in the city of Tarsus. His earthly, his early religious training came from the best rabbinical school in Jerusalem. School was led by the well-known and highly respected Pharisee Gamaliel. Thus Saul was very well educated. His Pharisee zeal for God's law and dedication to stopping the early spread of Christianity knew no bounds. His determination to eradicating those who believe the teachings of Jesus led him to take bold actions, such as going from house to house in order to find believers in Jesus Christ so that they could be prosecuted, persecuted. When Saul was 30 years old, he witnessed an event that would remain etched in the recesses of his mind. This event was the stoning of Stephen. You see, for the first time in Saul's life, he realized that as much zeal as he had for persecuting those who believed in Christ, he was a man who was even willing to die and be stoned to death for the cause of Christ. <clears throat> Saul watched intently as Stephen was being stoned, and he noticed there was a strange countenance on Stephen's face. He noticed that Stephen seemed to be having an out-of-body experience. Although Stephen was being stoned, Saul, uh, Saul noticed that Stephen seemed to be focused on something far beyond his current circumstance. Amen. What Saul did not know and would later experience for himself was that Stephen was abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Though Stephen was being stoned, the pain was insignificant because Stephen's mind had already been lifted up to heavenly places. He said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. You see, because Stephen was abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, he had turned his eyes upon Jesus and looked full in his wonderful face. And the thing of this world had become strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. But even after Saul had witnessed the stoning of Stephen, he continued on his quest and became even more zealous as he now sought to remove any Christian influence in the synagogues of Damascus. Yeah. However, God has a way of stopping us in our tracks. Amen. Do you know that? Yes. You can think you're doing your own thing. Yes. You could think you're getting away with what you're doing, uh -oh. but God has a way in his own time of stopping you right in your tracks. Amen. It was on his trip to Damascus that the pivotal event in the life of Paul occurred. For it was on that road to Damascus that a light shined down from heaven. Knocked Saul to the ground and blinded him. Then he heard a voice from heaven which cried out, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Saul answered, who art thou, Lord? The Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. As Saul began to tremble, he asked Jesus, what will thou have me to do? From that point forward, Saul, whose name was changed to Paul, abided under the shadow of the Almighty. The same man who at one time sought to persecute anyone who even mentioned the name of 
Christ was now preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. The same man who agreed to have Stephen stoned to death was now willing to suffer the, for the same Jesus that Stephen died for. The same zeal that Saul used to persecute Christians would later be used by a converted Paul to win souls for the kingdom of God. Somebody said it is not how you start out, but it's how you end up. God, you see, God can take a drug deal and make him a, a deacon. God, God can take a prostitute and make her a deaconess. God can even take an atheist and make him or her a preacher of righteousness. There is no secret what God can do. What he's done for us. But after, after Paul's conversion, he experiences untold trials and tribulations. For those of you who are feeling sorry for yourself because of your trials, why don't you look at Paul's trials? You see, Paul gives a synopsis of his trials in the second book of Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning at verse 24. Paul says of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. In other words, he received 39 stripes, five times. You see, according to Mosaic law, 39 stripes or lashes was the maximum allowed for any one crime. Any more than that was considered cruel or unusual punishment. So Paul received the maximum punishment allowed for witnessing for Christ five times. Mm -hmm. as, Paul, as, as Paul continues his dialogue, he says thrice, that is three times, he was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice, three times, I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of wars, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen. In other words, those who walk with, who claim to be walking with me, they were actually plotting against me. In perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and naked. And I don't want to hear you ever talking about your little trials again. Paul had some trials. How do your trials stack up against the, the trials of Paul? Mm -hmm. In the midst of all of these things, how was Paul able to endure? How was he able to persevere? How was he able to get through all of these circumstances without losing his very mind? Mm -hmm. What kept Paul in the midst of his trials was that he abided under the shadow of the Almighty. He abided in a place where all are invited, but only a few dare to even enter. Yes. You see, whenever Paul needed a provider, he could call on Jehovah Jireh, his provider. Yes. Whenever Paul needed a healer, he could call on Jehovah Rapha, yes. our healer. Whenever Paul needed a calm in the midst of the turbulence, he could call Jehovah Shalom, our peace. Yes. Whenever Paul needed to be led, in the right direction, he could call in Jehovah Ra, our shepherd. Whenever Paul needed to feel God present, he could call on Jehovah Shama, our ever-present, omnipotent God. Whenever Paul became overwhelmed with his own sinfulness, he could call on Jehovah Sikanu, our righteousness. Whenever Paul was in trouble, he could call Jehovah Rai, our help in the time of trouble. Whenever Paul to be reminded about who owns everything in the universe. He could call on Jehovah Elohim, 
yes. our Creator. Yes. Whenever Paul needed to be reminded about where God belonged on his list of priorities, he can consult with Jehovah Nisi, yes. and he would discover that our God is high and lifted up. And whenever Paul felt that he needed a Savior, all that he had to do was call on Jehovah Adonai, yes. our Redeemer. Yes. Whenever Paul needed, whatever Paul needed was available because he abided under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. But I want you to know that the story does not end there. Amen. It does not end there. Verse 16 wraps it up by saying, with long life shall I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. You see, after watching over me all of my life, after providing all of my needs according to his riches and glory, after watching over my children, after keeping me safe through dangers seen and unseen, after being a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway, after being with me not only on the mountaintop, but also in the valley, after being there through sunshine and rain, heartache and pain, after keeping me when I could not even keep myself, even after all of these things, he's going to turn around and show me salvation. Amen. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. He's going to turn around and save me. What a mighty God we serve. What a merciful God we serve. What a gracious God we serve. What an excellent God we serve. I don't know about you today, but I want to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For you see, there's joy in the secret place. There's peace in the secret place. There's love in the secret place. There's contentment in the secret place. There are blessings in the secret place. There's restoration in the secret place. There's forgiveness in the secret place. 